So purgatory, the in-between place. Not quite heaven, but not exactly hell. A place where people go to be purified so they can eventually make it to heaven. It's not a term you're going to find in the Bible, but neither is the word Trinity, or the word Bible for that matter. It's something that's part of the Catholic doctrine, but not the Protestant. So what's the deal? Is it a biblical concept or not? Are there any scriptures that support this idea? Do people go to purgatory when they die? And what does the Bible have to say? Let's take a look. Attention, bargain shoppers. So the idea behind purgatory is as follows. There will be no sin in heaven. This is pretty universally agreed upon across all Christian doctrines. And the Catholic Church teaches that all who die in God's grace, but are still imperfect, are assured of their eternal salvation. But after death, they must undergo a purification. The idea is that some elements of people may be imperfect and thus incompatible with the glory and greatness of God. So this would be a Christian, somebody who believes in Jesus, and so they're promised salvation, but there's something about them that needs to change. There's something about them that won't carry on into heaven. Maybe they're an alcoholic, maybe they're a racist, or maybe they're greedy. So those elements of who they are as a person would need to be purged from them before they can enter heaven. And the Catholic Church gives the name of this final purification of the elect, purgatory. And this is supported by such verses as 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 14. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw for their work, it will be shown for what it is, because the day of judgment will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. So a couple of things to clear up here. So in our modern Western mindsets, we view purgatory as a place of sorts, somewhere where people are held until they're purified. Kind of like a cosmic DMV, just sitting around waiting for their number to be called. But the Catholic doctrine does not teach this. It doesn't doesn't outline terms of purgatory or a place or a time frame. Purgatory is merely the name given by the Catholic Church for the final purification, something that could even take place an instant after we die. It was never meant to be like some sort of middle realm, a cosmic county jail where people go to sober up. So that being said, believing that we go somewhere other than heaven or hell when we die is not biblical. Hebrews 9.27 tells us, It is appointed for men to die once, and after this come judgment. So there will be a final judgment. And the Bible talks a lot about this separation that is going to be happening. Luke 3.17 tells us, His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So nowadays we don't get too down with the agricultural references, but the chaff is the unusable part of the wheat stock. So in order to bake with it or do anything useful with it, you have to separate the wheat from the chaff. You have to remove the chaff, separate the good from the bad parts, the usable from the unusable. And so here is where theologically there is some debate. Is there going to be a final purification where everything sinful in us is burned away and we're then able to enter into the kingdom of God, into the presence of God? Or is it something that's already been done through Jesus on the cross? We can look at verses like 1 Peter 2.24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So this would seem to indicate that we've already been healed. But logically, being human, we do still sin and have sinful nature. And we have verses like the aforementioned 1 Corinthians 3, which reads, Fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. And I will say there isn't necessarily a definitive answer to this. We do know that there will be a final judgment. Jesus tells us, Everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. And we know that for all those who believe in Jesus, the sentence has already been determined. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. 
We know that we will be transformed and given new bodies, but the mechanics of how that transformation happens is a little bit unclear. A big part of Jesus's ministry was telling people to repent, to turn from their sinful ways, to align themselves now in this life with God's heart as much as possible. This was very important to Jesus that we do this. And one reason could be if our sins are removed from us, like the chaff and the wheat being separated, then the more we are in line with God now, the more of who we are as a person will survive into the next life. That might be why Paul said, if you believe but don't align yourself with Jesus' teachings, that you'll survive only as one escaping through the flames. So I don't know, but what do you think? Will there be a final purification where God removes all the stuff from us that isn't going to make it into heaven? Or is that something that's already been done through Jesus on the cross? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll also leave the verses used today in the description. Please feel free to like and subscribe. It does help out the channel. My name is Adam. This is Bargain Bin Theology. And remember, you get what you pay for.